Hi there, Toy here, and today I am shooting my movie review video, and I'll also be introducing my next curious question. Um, I used to do, you know, a more thorough interview, um, not interview, review of movies on my blog. And so I've just kind of cut back on that so that I can actually post more <laughs> reviews because it was taking too much time. And so because of that, I'm actually able to do at least two reviews a month, which I'm really excited about. So let's see. Let me look at my notes. This month, um, I was able to review two movies at home. I did make it out to the theater this month, um, mainly because I was sick a lot and also because um, I don't always make it out to the theater. It's not common for me and my husband to um, rush out to the theater to watch a lot of movies. We try to catch, you know, the big blockbusters that we're really looking forward to. But uh, we're pretty thrifty, you know, we save our money and watch a lot of stuff on streaming. Here we go. So, the two movies that I reviewed uh, this month are um, Disney's Moana and the Netflix original Okja. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with Okja and um, this was a very interesting movie. Um, the main reason why I was interested in, I mean the concept itself if you don't know, it's a Netflix original movie and what it is is it's the story of a, a corporation that is introducing this new product to the world. And so it's a genetically altered super pig and they're doing this like contest to see who, which farmer around the world can raise, you know, the best pig. And then, you know, this is going to be a new food source for the world, a cheap and every, um, everything. But of course, um, they're not showing that it's this genetically altered thing. They're making it seem like it's natural and everything. And it's, it's, to me, it was kind of a far-fetched idea, but I wanted to see how they portrayed it in the movie. And I think they did a pretty good job of portraying it in the movie. And so the flip side of it is when they actually introduced this, you know, new food source to the public, there's this, you know, little girl, one of the farmers who raised, you know, her super pig. She treats it more like a, a pet or um, a part of the family. And she's not, um, you know, she doesn't want to see it become food for someone. And then there's this whole, like, activist group that are trying to help the super pig. Which, by the way, the super pig is called Okja. So that's why that's the name of the movie. The little girl who raises her is called Mija, I believe. Uh, these are Japanese names, so I might be pronouncing them wrong. But I'm pretty sure that's how they pronounce them in the movie. And so... The movie stars Tilda Swinton, which um, I like her. I think she's one of those people who you know that she's not going to appear in something that doesn't have some kind of like meat or grit to it. Whether you like her films or not, I think she plays interesting parts. Um, also in the movie is uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, who was okay. And um, Paul Dano. I really like Paul Dano. He's another one who... I don't think I've ever seen him in just like a normal role. I mean, I'm sure there might be one out there. I'm not his number one fan, but all the roles that I've seen him play have always been either interesting parts or the movies are quirky, maybe a little dark. And that's definitely what this movie was. I was cur I was interested to see in the opening credits that it's executive produced by Brad Pitt. So I don't, I don't know if that had any effect on it. But overall, I thought it was a really good film. It was weird. There were a lot of moments in it that I feel like were there for the shock value and um, I understand that so I'm not like upset about it but you could tell you know they really want to like tug at people's heartstrings or turn their stomachs at certain points in the story and so um, I would say overall I would give Okja a four. It was a, it was a good movie. I'm glad I saw it. There's a handful of people that I would recommend to it. I don't think it's so recommendation across the board just because it is a little bit um, outside of the mainstream especially for some of my friends and family but I, I enjoyed it I would I would totally watch it again next up is Moana and actually this one I had wanted to see in the theater but again like I said I don't always make it out to the theater um, 
I don't always watch Disney films also in theater. Usually I wait to watch a Disney film in um, on streaming or something like that, except for when it came to Finding Dory. I was I was I told my husband, I'm like, dude, I don't care if you're interested in this movie or not, we're seeing it in the theater. But um this was one that I missed and I know it's been on streaming for a while and again I just kept forgetting about it. And so I finally um saw it and the story is not at all what I expected. Um, I was so happy that this wasn't another Disney princess movie. Because there have been other Disney princess movies that people claim aren't Disney princess movies. And as far as I can tell, they are. You know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the whole princess thing, but I'm over it, you know. Um, I like the fact that this was a truly diverse film. Um, all of the characters were, you know, indigenous island people, and I thought that was amazing. Um, I still have a lot of issues with Disney's whole diversity thing, where they'll stick in a, you know, a, a diverse character here and there in different stories. I feel like if it just feels natural, they've done a good job, but sometimes I feel like it's forced. Um, I think when they did, um, what was that movie, Big Hero 6? Um, I thought that movie was great as far as like diversity, whatever they So anything, anyway, um, I thought, you know, that was really good. This was, that, like I said, this was not a, a princess story. I love the fact that at the beginning of the movie, you find out that Moana is being groomed to be the next chief. She's not being groomed to be a princess or a queen or anything like that. She's being groomed to be the next chief. And that kind of plays into what the whole story is about. Basically, she's going to have to save her island with the help of this demigod who kind of made a bad choice that ended up having these repercussions and she has to basically go rescue him then turn around and fix everything else with his help and it was just I thought it was a really good story really not at all without what I was expecting um, I, I have always had kind of confidence in Disney to the point where if they do something that's disappointing, it really makes me angry and I speak out against it. But when they do something that's not spectacular, I'm just like, eh, you know. But I really feel like that they hit the mark with Moana and I would give this movie a five and recommend it. So those are my movie reviews for the month. I want to jump into my next thing, which is my curious questions. I did this last month. And I had no idea, you know, how this was going to work out. I wasn't really expecting to have anyone <laughs> participate or contribute, but they did, and I was so happy. Last month, I asked, what do you think is harder? And the choices um, that I gave were uh, writing a song with lyrics, um, writing a novel-length book, and I said novel-length because it's fiction and non-fiction, writing a script or screenplay, writing a poem or writing a recipe and I was I was really um you know like I said I was shocked that people actually contributed to it um on Google Plus my friend Tim responded by saying that he thought writing the song would be the hardest and you know we kind of just conversed about that a little bit because there's a lot that goes into writing a song especially if you're not just focusing on the lyrics if you have to compose the music you know there's timing involved there's mathematics involved you have to consider the harmony and the rhythm and all that kind of stuff so i thought that was pretty interesting and then um on linkedin i there was a guy who responded to the question and um i kind of ignored it and that was my fault i dropped the ball on it because i didn't like his response i ignored him and i was wrong for that i should have responded to him right away and maybe I could have re-engaged him better but he basically used the question as an opportunity to promote himself which that happens a lot on social media and he said that he thought that the hardest thing to, to do would be to write a book and he literally goes on to say that anyone with drive can write a book but of course you know somewhere in there he mentions the names of his books and you know his hard work and so it was I just didn't get a lot of you know interaction out of that but again I feel like I dropped the ball there if I had responded to him right when he first you know posted that I could have said something and maybe engaged him and maybe someone else would have seen it and engaged with it but because I didn't 
No one else even bothered to respond. I literally responded today before shooting this video. So that was my fault for dropping the ball there. Uh, I got the most interaction on my question from Twitter. So I think I'm really starting to love Twitter. Um, I had all kinds of, you know, responses. Not, I mean, not a whole bunch of people engaged, but the few people who, you know, responded engaged with me, you know, saying how, you know, poetry is hard to write because it's restrictive, you know, it's hard, it's a creative venue that's kind of hard, and I, and I reiterated that I agreed with that, but I appreciate poetry. And, you know, another person was like, I think it'd be really hard to write a screenplay because of all the rules and the formatting, and I agreed with that too. And um, even eventually, you know, getting got started getting into the conversation of how an author could collaborate with the screenwriter to do it and stuff. So I thought the Twitter conversation that I was able to strike up went really well. And then on Facebook, I had a few of my author friends um, respond saying that they too thought that writing a screenplay or writing a, um, a recipe would be hard. And I, I feel like for me personally, writing the song with music would be the hardest. I would actually have to learn how to write music and I don't see that happening anytime soon. I would say the next thing would be the screenplay and then the recipe. And this is just from personal experience. I write recipes all the time and when I give them to other people, they complain that the stuff doesn't turn out the way I did it. And I, re I realize it's my fault, I'm just not good and writing a recipe that can be used over and over and over again by other people. And so I know that it's hard to write a recipe. So I'm going to stop babbling and say that those are, you know, my results. If you want to see them, you know, check out the link below in my blog. And the question for this month is a little bit lighter. It is, what do you enjoy more? Seeing a movie in the theater, watching a live concert, going to an amusement park, or going to a bookstore or shopping and I list bookstore or shopping together because I don't shop but I love books and this is kind of a booktube thing even though I'm an author so I just wanted to make that question kind of fair for you know whether you are into books or not you could still you know answer that question in case so hopefully you enjoyed my movie reviews for this month uh, I can't wait to see what I do next month and I would love to hear some of your thoughts on the movies as well. And I think I might try to actually review um, maybe some television shows. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I've been getting into net Netflix and um, Amazon Prime TV. So that's the possibility. So let me know what you think. And that's all I have for now. Bye-bye.